Uh, this video I want to go over how to overcome the fear of water in which to learn how to swim. Um, I think this is a relevant thing for people out there, you know, some adults out there that might not even, that don't know how to swim. And as somebody that learned very late in my life, um, I know exactly what it takes to overcome that fear. And even in the martial arts, you know, I talk about Bruce Lee all the time, but some people might not notice or might not know that Bruce Lee himself was actually afraid of water and he actually didn't know how to swim himself. And he had a lot of fear around water. So it's kind of ironic because, you know, he was the one who was teaching people to be like water and how the water is like the Tao. And, um, you know, the, the, the amazing the amazing attributes of water and it's something that I feel that you shouldn't be embarrassed about if you do have fear of water um, because it's a legitimate fear because death can occur in an instant in the water there's so many drowning deaths out there um, accidental sometimes and a lot of so other times it's not accidental it's just basically people that have become overconfident in their abilities to swim and they, they take risks um, that they should not have taken. Um, maybe they didn't wear a life vest when they're out boating or they, you know, they're, they're surfing and then they, they didn't um, respect the, you know, the weather and the waves and they got dragged out into, into the ocean or the lake. Um, there's even things where happened recently in Chicago because we live by Lake Michigan where you know a father's swimming with with his his daughter and then you know out in the lake and then she gets pulled out there into deep and in, deep into the lake and then he went out there to save her and then he ended up drowning and dying and then the lifeguard ended up saving the daughter so just imagine that, you know, swimming with your your daughter in the lake and then she, you know, you go out there to save her and then as you're trying to save her, you end up passing away. So it's definitely a legitimate fear, um, especially having kids and, you know, you're in the pool and one of the kids goes into the deep end and then he ends up, you know, drowning or, you, you know, people jumping off you know into the pool and then they hit their head against the concrete and then they, they drown there's a lot of accidental deaths out there and like i said um where people just misgauge their abilities and people could die in the water and that's a legitimate fear that's that's something that i i was fearful of i didn't learn how to swim until way later in my life into adulthood and it's kind of like i didn't learn how to ride a bike until later too like i was i didn't learn how to ride a bike until the age of like 13 you know it's like really late in life and these are types of things that i feel that people should learn as early as possible um er learning as early as possible how to ride a bike learning as early as possible how to swim and and to survive in the water. I'm not saying that we need to be Olympic athletes here, you know, or competitive athletes in the water. I'm just saying like, learn how to survive in the water and uh, protect your life in case you ever find yourself in a situation where, you know, you end up in deep water. So um, one thing that's very clear is that if you don't learn this early, it gets kind of harder and harder. So the earlier you learn, the better and also the less embarrassment you know imagine you know an adult in his 30s that doesn't know how to ride a bike i mean it, it gets it's kind of embarrassing or even for me i didn't really know how to swim even when i was in high school and then you have to in gym class you have to do these qualifications these swimming tests and then everybody's testing and then you're one of the few maybe one or two in the whole class that doesn't know how to swim and then everybody else knows how to swim it's an embarrassing thing, you know, especially if you're you're athletic and you can do all these different things already, do all these push-ups and sit-ups and pull-ups and 
you're good at basketball, you're good at different sports, but then yet you still don't know how to swim. It's a very important skill to learn, I feel. And for me, the biggest thing that was the challenge to learning was just lack of having access to a pool in order to learn. So I never had the chance to learn because I never was around any pools, you know, and eventually through my adult life, I had to like teach myself um, how to swim and feel more comfortable in the water. And then with doing that, I was, I've been able to, you know, teach my children how to, of course, ride a bike early on in age. And then also now that I have access to a pool, you know, I, I was able to teach my children how to swim. But really, it wasn't even having to teach them much. much. It's just basically getting them to feel comfortable in the water. And the more that you feel comfortable in the water, then, then it increases your chances eventually to learn how to swim. Um, so, what, what I say is, even if you don't have access to a pool, um, we all, usually we all have a bathtub, and if you don't have a bathtub, you just have a shower, then we all have access to a sink. So, what all you have to do, really, the easiest way for me to teach someone how to not be afraid of the water and how to swim is to just basically feel comfortable with the water so like you just have to have this understanding of breath and how important breath is if we don't breathe then we die so in combat if somebody's choking you you know he's choking you around the throat or the neck you know it cuts off your your ability to breathe and then if you do that for too long you could die so and that's what happens in the water is that because we're human and we're not like fish or anything like that we cannot breathe underwater unless we have like equipment so because we can't breathe underwater we have to learn how to work with the water so then we don't do not breathe in while we're in the water it's okay to breathe out when you're in the water but it's not okay to breathe in because your body's not built to do that so you have to just have that understanding and then second in my opinion, what's important is your sight. Like basically, um, if you close your eyes and you try to do anything blind, like where you have your eyes closed, it's gonna be very hard to do it. So meaning, say I said, hey, you know, well, today you just blindfold yourself and go ahead and drive a car. Like you wouldn't be able to do it because you need your sight in order to drive and that's all you only drive when you have sight you'll never drive a car without sight or even if i told you hey you know why don't you take a shower while blindfolded it's gonna throw you off because nobody does that everybody takes a shower with their eyes open everybody you feel comfortable when you have sight but if you don't have sight like anytime you're doing anything out there while you're awake, you always have your eyes open. We will like never do anything without, with our eyes closed um, because we have been very dependent on this, this sensibility to be able to see. So when it comes to the water, I feel that it's very important to be able to see in order to eventually learn to not be afraid of the water. So one of the most important things that I would say if that you want to learn how to swim is to purchase some goggles so then you can see. The, pro the reason why you need them is because if you try to open your eyes under the water without them, your eyes could start burning and it's going to hurt and you're going to feel pain. And when you have pain, anything, anytime you have pain, it's going to be hard to learn something and it's going to be more fearful because you don't want to feel pain. So the best thing to do is to just purchase some goggles and wear the goggles. So once you wear the goggles, then the suction cups from the goggles will prevent water from entering into your eyes. And then what it's gonna allow you to do is gonna allow you to see under the water. So once you can see under the water, then it changes a lot of things. It kind of makes it less um, fearful because 
now you can see you know so once you have sight so this is something that you could practice um, at home just fill up the tub and you can put your head under the water with the goggles on and then you can see under the water if you don't have a tub then just use a sink and put your head in the sink or your face in the sink and just open your eyes in the sink so then in the water in the sink so then you feel comfortable with that so basically you just put it on as I'm doing here and then you go under like this and I was able to see the whole time because I had goggles on okay so before you do that um, you have to learn how to hold your breath and so once you have the goggles you can see under the water then all you got to do is learn how to hold your breath so holding your breath meaning not allowing any air to get, get in through your mouth or your nose so there's two ways that the air come through your breathing either you breathe through your nose by, by inhaling or you breathe through your mouth by inhale so what you have to do is hold your breath so then no water could get into um, your your system through your nose or your mouth so so then another important attribute to learn is to be able to hold your breath as long as you possibly can so you could practice this without being in the water or underwater just practice holding your breath on dry land and then time yourself to see how long you can do it so the longer that you hold your breath the better because then that just increases your lung capacity and allows you to be able to um, just be underwater for longer so if you can only hold your breath for like two seconds or three seconds underwater that's not good but if you can hold your breath in underwater for like 20 seconds 30 seconds a minute the longer you hold it then the easier it will be to learn how to swim because then you just have more time you know you don't have to rush or anything like that so holding your breath so maybe like try to hold your breath for at least 20 seconds you know in dry land and then after that then just put on the goggles and learn to hold your breath without closing your nose with your hand or anything like that but you have to learn how to hold your breath without the assistance of your hands because you will need your hands in order to learn how to swim. You know, you can't really swim that efficiently without your hands and your arms. So you have to learn how to hold your breath with, without the assistance of your hands, all right? So maybe you make a goal, hold your breath underwater for 20 seconds. You could use your goggles um, and be able to see while you're holding your breath. So if you are in the pool or you're in the tub or you're in the sink, just learn to hold your breath for about 20 seconds. So I'll do that right now. I'll time myself. So you take a deep breath in and then hold it. That was uh, 20 seconds. Um, so once you accomplish that goal, then you're in a good path. So you hold your breath on the water for 20 seconds. You're able to see because you have goggles on. And then now, okay, how do you swim? Well, one thing you could also learn first before you start swimming is learning to understand that although you are not allowed to breathe and breathe in while you're in the water, you're allowed to breathe out. So you could breathe out mainly through your nose and then you'll see like bubbles coming out. So you breathe in, hold your breath, and then under the water, breathe out through the nose and then breathe that ex exhale out in the water. So then you, when you learn to do that, then 
once you need to breathe in again, then just get out of the water, take your breath in while you're out of the water, and then hold it again, go back under, and then breathe out under the water. Come up, breathe in, come down, breathe out. Okay? So, that's an important thing too to, to, to do. Because in order to breathe, you always have to breathe in and you always have to breathe out. So, when you're in the water, you, you, you could breathe out. Breathe out, so then once you get your, when, when you breathe, breathe out, and then you get your head back up, then you breathe in, you go back down, you breathe out, you bring your head up, you breathe in, you go down, you breathe out, you come back up, you breathe in. So that's how you do it, you just get that rhythm going. So you practice that. So you just breathe in when you come up, breathe out when you come down, breathe in when you come up, breathe out when you come down. So it just goes like this. So you get that, all you have to do is just get that rhythm down. So when you breathe, so you basically your mouth is open when you're up, and then your mouth is closed when you go down. Mouth is open up, mouth is closed down. Mouth open up, mouth closed down. So you get that rhythm down. So open, close, open, close. And then your, your, your nose, when, you're, when you, you exhale out your nose when you're in the water, and then you inhale when you're up, exhale in your water inhale when you come up so you just have to get used to that that's basically the foundation of of swimming if you just learn how to have to hold your breath under the water and then learn how to inhale when you are out of the water and then exhale when you're in the water that's pretty much all you really that's the foundation to everything when it comes to swimming and then what you do is when you get that down, you can practice that at home, you can do that in the tub, you can do that in the sink. You get that down. Once you get that down, then all you gotta do is just go to the lake, go to the ocean, go to the pool. And just start practicing that in the pool where your feet are able to touch the ground and you don't need to worry about like drowning or anything because you're standing. And then you practice that in, in the pool, in the lake, in the ocean. Practice take, practicing that, that breathing method. Um, once you get that down, then all you have to learn to do is just move forward um, with that breathing, breathing method. So you just have to kick your legs like to propel you forward and then move your arms. So you just coordinate all of that with the breath. So you could even um, just work on the movements of your hands, your arms, and your legs, even while you just hold your breath under the water. You can move your arms just a simple way. It's just moving it like this. And you cup the hands like that so you can move the water more efficiently. And you just move it like this. And then your legs, you just kick your legs, um, kind of like, like you're doing like a, like a squat thrust or something like that. Like you bring your knees up and you just push, push in the water, you know, push in the water, and and just you'll be able to move. And that's just all you do. That's the most, the easiest swim stroke that you can learn. And then learn that. And then once you learn that, then you can teach yourself the other strokes. But that's just the foundation right there. It's just learning how to to move in the water by pushing that water behind you as you propel forward. Um, and then finally, the last step is practicing this stuff in the deep end. And in the deep end, it can be a little more scary because, you know, something might happen. You might, um, you might lose confidence or you might... Um, 
freak out and then all of a sudden you know you, you find yourself drowning because you you um you and you accidentally inhaled in the water and then now you just swallow their bunch of water and then you're freaking out you know so that takes more time but at least learn how to swim where your feet is able to touch the ground and build that confidence up before you go into the deep end and when you do go in the deep end just stay close to the edge so you have something to hold on to in case something happens or something goes wrong make sure that there's always somebody watching you or helping you uh, if you do go in the deep end but if there's no one there to help then just keep practicing on the shallow end um, and don't do the deep end just yet until you feel more comfortable and confident. So I'll just swim this way and back with that stroke that I'm talking about and then you'll see what I'm talking when you don't see what I'm talking about. And that's that's all it is right there um, but that's my feedback I mean there's people out there I know there's people out there that don't know how to swim because I was one of them and it's something where you know you want to learn it but at the same time you don't want to be made fun of and you don't want to be embarrassed and this is something where it's just helpful to learn it from a video where you learn it in privacy you know you teach yourself teach yourself at home um, and then you know find a pool and then just learn it yourself so that you don't need to worry about other people making fun of you laughing at you because you can't do something that they could do and you know it's I'm telling you as you get older it gets more embarrassing because everybody knows how to do something that you don't know how to do and it's just it's it's frustrating so this is something where it's good to learn it in privacy and then build that confidence and teach yourself you know you don't you don't really need somebody to, to teach you how to do it it's something that you will be you can teach yourself it's just learning about the fundamentals and how the breath and how important it is to to be able to to breathe while you're you're you know you're how to breathe properly while you're in the water you can't just breathe as you do on dry land you know i don't need to hold my breath i can just keep breathing continuously however i feel like breathing i could breathe very shallow I could breathe long and deep. I could breathe however I want to breathe on dry land, but not in the water. You can't just breathe how you want to breathe. You need to work with the water. And that's basically just learning how to hold your breath in the water and then um, inhale when you're out of the water and just keep doing that over and over again. Just learn how to do strokes. Your hands just move like this and then your legs just kick out. Like you're just kicking your legs out under the water to propel you forward and that's it. And then you just, coordinate the breathing with the movement and then that's swimming all right so we'll finish up right here i'm just showing you a couple of my kids doing it and just to show you that hey if kids could do it then adults could do it too you know and um it's something that we should all learn and we you know like walking like running like uh bike riding like driving a car is all is something that we should all learn and know how to do in my opinion all right angelina swim uh, you or kill swim from um there to here actually from here to there and then back but i'm doing it first on camera even though i'm already tired are you ready Ooh, we vlog it. Mm. hello Say hi. Hola. Hi. Oh, All right, God. so you can watch her swim. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay. I don't want to splash my shell.
You got it? Q, you want to do it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Ready? Go. Q, you swim like a dog. <laughs> All right, back. Uh, he swims like a dog. <laughs> Alright, again, Angelina, or no? Alright, one more time. Alright, go. All right, so there you have it. Um, that's your tutorial on how to not be afraid of the water and to swim. Take care. This kid needs to practice.